Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Hi, my name's Terry Arford. I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia. I'm 60 years old and I've had a heart attack. Uh, I come from, uh, like I said, Morgantown, which is the home of West Virginia University, which has a very well-known uh, teaching hospital there. And that's where I had uh, all of my procedures done. Uh, during which time, this procedure was never mentioned to me. Uh, I was really upset later on uh, when I found out about that this was an option that I did not know about. When did you first become ill? What happened? In 1995, I had a heart attack uh, and it was determined that I needed six bypasses. Uh, so uh, I had the, the bypasses and everything went well until about the year 2000. Uh, the year 2000, I had another heart attack, had to go in, had stents put in. Uh, since that time, I've had five more uh, operations having stents put in. Uh, last December, I had an operation. Uh, and they patched the main vein in the, the front of my heart and stented it. Uh, within two months, it closed up. Uh, in May, I had to head, go in and have another operation. They said the whole front of my heart had died, and I had one small vein uh, artery that was left is the only thing putting pumping uh, blood to my heart. Uh, so when the doctor came in in May and told me this, he basically told me, he said, uh, I needed to, uh, to see about getting a uh, heart transplant, get on the list for a heart transplant. And if not, then there wasn't any more that they could do for me. So basically my options were heart transplant, go home and die. Uh, and then thank goodness that uh, my children are of the younger generation that, that know how to use the internet. My daughter found out about the stem cell, the stem cell uh, treatments that you all do. Uh, and from that time on, as I contacted people who had had this procedure done back in the United States, I became very enthused and decided that this was an option. It wasn't heart transplant or die. So I had a third option. And so I'm here to, and I've had the procedure done. How do you feel about the people who didn't tell you that this was an option? Really, I'm very upset. Uh, you know, I have talked with my cardiologist. Uh, he, uh, as he explained to me, he said he's never had anybody that's had this done before. So he doesn't have any firsthand knowledge. So I told him I would be his guinea pig. When I go back, I want him to run all the tests on me that he can run on me and find out how much improvement I, I have uh, so that other people, when they come to him from now on, he will know that there's something that can help these people besides the options that I stated earlier. How, how apart from your doctor, how are you going to help get the word out into the community? Well, I, I would like, like uh, I've, I've talked to uh, people in, uh, in our local newspaper at home uh, and uh, have asked them to uh, uh, consider taking all the information uh, for what I, where I was at prior to coming over here uh, and where I am now and uh, see if they would write a story and put it out to the people so that other people with a heart condition have the opportunity to know that there is something that they can do other than just crawl up and die. You want it in the local newspapers. Why is that? Well, if it doesn't get out to people in general and it just stays on the Internet, there's going to be a lot of people, especially in my age group, that will never know about it. And their options are going to be death. Uh, I, I don't feel that's right. Sixty years old is not that old. You know, I, hopefully I could have a couple more good years out there. Between May, when you were um, given the choice of a transplant, and July, when you came to Bangkok, what could
couldn't you do? I couldn't do anything. I mean, basically, I couldn't walk 100 feet uh, at a normal pace without getting tightness of the chest, pains in my left arm, and uh, shortness of breath, hard time breathing. Uh, I realize that my situation is a lot different than a lot of other people, and that is because I only had this one little vein that is providing blood to my heart. Uh, this procedure, we are hoping in the next couple months, will stimulate new blood flow so that I will be able to get more blood to, to my heart and I'll be able to do a lot more things. What's it been like for your family? Well, it's been very rough, very rough. Uh, because at the time in May when I was told what my options were, uh, I had told the doctor immediately I would not have a heart transplant. I mean, with no veins, my veins are either totally blocked off or collapsed. Some of them are collapsed in my arteries. So uh, to put a new heart in there is not going to do me any good. So I was just going to go home and do do a few things I liked and probably kick the bucket. How do you feel about the fact that you can't get this treatment in your own country? Oh, huh? I think it's I think it's a total shame. I I know that they're doing. Uh, I found out on the internet that they are doing some uh, research on it at Cleveland Clinic and a few other clinics in the United States. But they're like five year trials. I couldn't wait five years. Five years and there's going to be a lot of people dead in five years. That wouldn't have to be. So you came to Bangkok. What was the hospital like? Oh, the hospital was great. Uh, the rooms uh, are better than <laughs> any room I've had in the United States. I mean, it was almost like he's in a hotel room. Uh, the nurses were fantastic. Uh, and I'm not saying that uh, just because we're sitting here uh, having this talk. They were great. Uh, the, the communication at some times was a little bit hard because of the English. But when we would run into a problem where somebody couldn't understand me or I couldn't understand them, they would go get somebody that could uh, uh, relate. So we had no problems. Their nursing care was fantastic. I mean, they took care of me like, uh, like I was the only patient there. And the doctors? The doctors were fantastic too. Uh, I, I've really, I mean, I, I appreciate them. Uh, I uh, extend my hand to them to, to thank them the best that I can. That uh, uh, what they did and the way they treated me was, uh, I, I, I couldn't ask for better. What would you say to other people in a condition similar to yours? Anybody that's in a condition similar to mine or even if you're better than mine, and I hope, I hope to God you're better than mine. Uh, this is something I really think you ought to look at. I mean, the, the ability to be able to regenerate blood flow and muscle to your heart, what more can you ask for? So for you, it was worth it? Good it's, investment? It's definitely worth it. Even if I drop over dead tomorrow, it was definitely worth a try. And that's all I ask for, is given an option and given something to try. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the community at large, if you like? The only thing I would say is, I hope everybody that sees this will go out and tell 10 people. And have those 10 people tell 10 more people. Just so that people in general understand what this is all about. This is not embryonic uh, stem cells that... People in the United States seem to dwell on that everything when we talk stem cells is, you know, embryonic. This is, they took my blood, took the stem cells out of my blood, placed them back in my heart. Now, that's using, there's no rejection factor. That's using my own 